Saturday and happy day six of Vlogmas. Today we are doing Caroline Gervin. Like I said yesterday, I have reviewed Caroline a number of times before. Like we're really living on the edge with this shirt here. And in the first video that I reviewed Caroline in, I was probably being really snarky and she didn't like it. <laughs> the video's old, I wouldn't even go back and watch it. But I do remember my big takeaway being the amount of volume felt very excessive for general population. And I know that what Caroline says is like, these are her workouts that she does day to day and she's just sharing them. I don't know if that's true. We're not gonna really get into that. I will say she has so much free content. And something that I always loved about her content was that she does have different programs and none of the programs are really like aesthetic based. They're always something really cool like epic iron. And last night I went on her website and I noticed that she had a kick ass kettlebell program. And I was like, let's try a workout from here. I have actually tried, I think two of Caroline's kettlebell workouts before. It's in this video or another one, or I don't know, it's somewhere. And the only thing I remember is that it was a lot of swings, like a lot of swings. So I'm curious to see now that I have more like continuing education in kettlebell work, just like what her approach is. I know she doesn't cue, but like, you know, how she shows different things. And especially because I am in the process of building out a kettlebell program, an intro to kettlebell program for the Fit Club in January. So I got kettlebells on the brain, baby. Let's talk about the schedule today, cause I'm actually working. I don't usually work on Saturdays, but I have one, two, three, four, five. Wait, what? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I have five mobility assessments. I said this yesterday, but I have been offering free mobility assessments to my personal training clients, not only to enhance their programming more, but also just to like give me practice time. And then we're gonna do the Caroline Gervin workout. And then we have an ugly Christmas sweater party to go to tonight. I not gonna take you with me, but if any photos are taken, I will share them in tomorrow's video. All right, so that's the day. It's 9.30, my first assessment is at 10. So let's get it going. That was a lot of people to talk to. I wanna chat really quickly about what we're looking for, um, what to expect based off of the thumbnail, the description, all that kind of stuff, and then we'll jump right on into this. So the workout that we're doing today is the Complex Kettlebell Workout from the Kick-Ass Kettlebell Program. When I picked this last night, I thought complex meant like, it was advanced, it was, it was complex. And then I actually read the description and I was like, oh, it's like a complex. It's like an AM wrap round. <laughs> so this is an AM wrap workout, which means it's definitely going to be sweaty. It's going to be cardiovascular. And you essentially do a set of exercises over a prescribed amount of time as much as you can. So that's definitely what to expect. Sweat, cardio, heart rate up. I really like in the description that she emphasizes working at your own pace, setting your own limits based off of your own skill level. But I did notice scrolling down, I don't think there's a warm up in this because she has one listed at the bottom. So that is interesting to me. I'd be curious to see and I'll go look and poke around. Does she list this warm up under every single workout? That is a little bit of a red flag in my opinion because warm up should be specific to what you're doing in the workout. I made a whole video about how to actually program a warm up for yourself in the most strategic way possible. But a warm up is not just getting your body warm. A warm up is priming your joints and your muscles in different movement patterns so that you can perform them A, to the best of your ability, and B, not injure yourself. So I'm curious about that. We're gonna jump into that warm up. We're gonna jump right into the workout. Then we're gonna come back and talk about it.
we're on the floor. We're going to talk. That was very challenging. <laughs> Two things we have to talk about. Is it science back? And did I enjoy it? So like, what are the claims made? This is definitely more cardio based. It's lots of exercises done for time, as many reps as you can. That's like the claims that are being made, right? And that absolutely meets those claims. Obviously this is one workout of, I believe five in her kettlebell program. We're only looking at this one. And what I'm about to say is not a reflection of Caroline as a whole, it's not a reflection of her whole business. Also, this workout is from two whole years ago. If I look at my workouts from two years ago, I would be like, what the heck are you doing? So I wanna say that right off of the bat. Let's start by talking about the warm up or technically the lack thereof within the actual program. Again, this is from two years ago. So I did go through and I looked at some of the most recent workouts that she's posted, which were from a year ago. And it seems like pretty much every time she either omits a warm up or she links to a generic one that is meant to like cover the whole program of workouts. So like I said in the beginning, this is a little bit of a red flag to me because your warm up should be specific to what you're doing. Yes, there are full body warm ups out there, but you can move your joints in a lot of ways. For instance, let's say that you are doing overhead pressing, but your shoulder warm up that day is that way. Well, you're not going to be prepared in that joint to press up overhead. That can either lead to a poor workout, poor form, or some injury. The warm up itself that she gave did go joint by joint, which I appreciate, but it was just a lot of like going through movements, no real muscle tension, no real attention to detail. It just felt very like, we're gonna get the body moving and get ourselves warm. So lack of tension, lack of specificity, because if we actually go to the workout itself, I'm gonna give you the warm up that I would suggest. Again, we're trying to make this an educational moment. We're not trying to like poo poo on someone. So let's take note of the movement patterns and or joints that I think we're gonna need. Curl to press, I definitely wanna work overhead mobility. Supine row, I definitely wanna get my back warmed up, pass under lunges. We wanna make sure that our knees, hips are ready for that. Uneven squat, knees, hips, ankles. Swings, I probably wanna put in some type of power exercise to understand how to generate power quickly from the hips. Rows, that was back, walking swings, front raises. So to get this horizontal plane as well, I would probably for the overhead mobility do some floor rainbows cause that's gonna kind of hit the whole shebang. Sumo squats, RDL, chest press, that's gonna be our horizontal press. I think because there was so much shoulder heavy stuff, I'm gonna add something in like an arm bar or a bottoms up hold to get all of those stabilized is working. I'm definitely feeling it in my shoulders. Clean to press power, windmill overhead and hinging, swing more power, more lower body, lower body. Great. All right, so here's the warm up that I would have done. I would start on the side with some floor rainbows. So this is gonna work our overhead mobility. We're also getting some nice T-spine rotation in here, which is gonna warm up the spine. Then I'm gonna flip onto the side and do a side plank with a leg hold. This is not only gonna get our obliques and our shoulder warmed up, it's also going to work our inner and outer thighs and our overall pelvic stability. And I'm gonna come into a half kneeling position for some kneeling ankle mobility, rocking back and forth, really taking a second in that end range of motion to feel that full dorsiflexion. Then I'm gonna hover into an iso split squat to warm up the ankles, hips, and knees and then I'm going to switch sides. Last thing on the floor, we're going to do a bottoms up chest press. So this is going to warm up all of those little stabilizing muscles in that horizontal pressing plane of motion. And I chose to do this from a chest press position because we've already hit that overhead mobility. So I'm trying to make sure that we're also prepped for the chest pressing. And then finally, I'm going to stand it up and I'm going to do some goblet drops. It's a really great drill to teach you how to break from the hips quickly and create power. Since we have a lot of swings, this is going to be a great drill to do in the beginning. And that's it. What is that? Six exercises. Take about 10 minutes to get through. So that was like the big takeaway that I got right in the beginning. I definitely didn't feel fully prepared to be jumping into the volume of training that we were doing. And I guess we can jump to that topic really quickly. I think this is a great workout for people who don't like to repeat the same exercises a lot. She did kind of get away with like a lot of the same movement patterns, like different types of squats, different types of hinges, different types of lunges. So I do appreciate that. So we did get repetition in terms of like, we saw lunges in a few different complexes, but I would have rather just had the complexes be a little longer, maybe have them be six minutes so that we don't have to see the exercise again. We can actually just get in like, like three sets of it because there were certain complexes I didn't even get through <laughs> more than one round. Like we had about 20 seconds left and I was like, oh, well, I don't want to start on the other side again because then I'm going to be uneven. So I would have rather done less complexes, more time in each and really drill in the movement patterns that we were working on. So for my rating, thinking of the original definition of what science back means, 
I'm going to give it a three and I'm taking off the two points simply because of the warm up situation. I am not trying to be mean and I'm trying to make this as educational as possible so you understand why warm ups are so important. I think the other thing that just makes me nervous about this whole video is, again, I was really snarky and over the top and really leaning into that and that like original review and I'm trying not to do that this time, but I definitely do have some, I think, valid criticisms and, and just points to bring up. You know, that video kind of like took off and a lot of the comments were very like, well, look at her body versus yours. She obviously knows what she's talking about and you don't. And like, yeah, she's a lot more fit than me, 100%. Like we can't deny that. But just because someone looks a certain way doesn't immediately make them an expert. Am I saying that Caroline's not an expert in her field? No, I think she is. She is very experienced, very educated, and knows what she's doing. But I think that we need to break that idea in the general public of like, oh, because this person looks a certain way, they are an expert. It doesn't always work that way. Anyway, just had to say that before all of the body shaming comes into the comments. Let's talk about enjoyment. Even though I didn't love the programming, I did actually enjoy this workout. I thought it flew by, and I think a lot of that was because there were so many different complexes and it was broken up throughout the workout. So I do see why people enjoy more of this like no repeat or very like short repetition type of workout. I, I get that. I think that coaching through it can help distract people from being in things a little bit longer than maybe they would prefer. So I think that was really my only takeaway for enjoyment. Like I would have loved some actual live coaching. I love that she talks to us in the beginning. She's so knowledgeable. She's so well-spoken. And I just wish we had that throughout. I know someone in the comments at one point said that Carolina said like she doesn't coach during the workout because she's working so hard that she can't. And I think that's where we draw that line of like, okay, well, are you coaching or are you just showing us? When I'm coaching workouts, like when I'm leading my live workouts that you've seen me do all week, I'm not using my max weight. That's not my workout for the day. My goal is to get you your workout for the day. So I'm showing lighter weight so I can cue. I'm coming to give corrections. I'm showing different form breakdowns. Am I moving throughout and is it effort? Yeah, but it's not my effort. Does that make sense? So I think that's the big difference. There's no right or wrong answer there. It comes down to your preference. So for enjoyment, I'm going to give this a four out of five. I did really enjoy it. Oh my gosh, it was actually really hard to stand up. Okay, the bowl is back. I'm gonna do a new technique today. I'm gonna reach in, no matter how many fall out, I'm gonna pull out one, that's it. Ready, three, count down with me. Ready, three, two, one. Whew. Tomorrow's is, oh. Mind Pump Maps Anabolic. Do you guys remember Mind Pump? I mean, they're still around. Mind Pump was like my first foray into understanding more like exercise science and all of that kind of stuff. I know that some people, a lot of people actually wrote this, which I'm so surprised by. I feel like this is such an old program. A lot of people wrote that they have like the first week free on YouTube or something. I think I bought this at one point. So. We're gonna do some research, we're gonna check it out. We're gonna do a little MAPS anabolic tomorrow. Remember on day one when I was like, I'm so scared I'm not gonna lift weights for the next 23 days. <sighs> I wanna go punch that girl in the face right now. Make sure you guys hit subscribe so you don't miss out on the rest of this series and I will see you all tomorrow, baby. Mm -hmm.